Um, hi, uh, it will all, only be me. Uh, my name is Jane Jansen. Uh, I work at the National Historical Museums in Sweden. Uh, we are six museums and uh, the archaeologists, uh, where I belong to the uh, technology unit. Uh, there are about 100 archaeologists with the archaeologists and we are located in five cities or towns in Sweden. Uh, nowadays, uh, my title is IT archaeologist, and that's what, what my bosses think I'm doing, IT stuff. Uh, but uh, I'm specialized in digital uh, documentation, any kind, be it databases, GIS, 3D models, surveying, and I help, help my fellow colleagues with uh, uh, documentation strategies. They even let me out in field uh, a couple of weeks every year. Um, I'm going to talk about Intrasys and how we use it now. Uh, Intrasys was modeled back in the late 90s. It was made by archaeologists and for archaeologists. Very early on, they realized that they needed to make the program very flexible because they could learned that they could not get two Swedish archaeologists to agree on what good, or, uh, good documentation is not even in their own organization. And neither could I get two specialists, uh, let's say uh, from archaeobotany or uh, osteology to agree. What they wanted was one system for storing all data. Uh, they wanted their own documentation stored there, uh, but also records from specialists from other disciplines. And that means everything. Geographical data, archaeological objects, finds, samples, results from analysis, photos, and other documents. And uh, all these documents are connected to one another with uh, relations. Every site has its own database. Uh, it's a multi-user system, which means that several archaeologists or specialists can record new data at the same time. Uh, so the data model of interest is, is object oriented, uh, oriented and the metadata is really flexible. It's not always used that way. Uh, for instance, in Norway, uh, the university museums and NICU, uh, they have a national template. Um, we have uh, provided interests for to, with a tool for creating and changing metadata. So this is where you can add new classes, attributes, uh, relations, and uh, descriptions, and tool tips on how the attributes are meant to be used. You can also use filters and add mandatory controls for user-entered values. There is, of course, a lot more you can do, recording symbols, codes, and uh, geo-objects. Um, but at our place then, at the archaeologists, we have six standard templates. Uh, two for early surveying, two for uh, contextual documentation, and two for single co context documentation. These are recycled and adapted to other museums' databases. Uh, it's usually the local museum that is going to store the finds and they have their own databases and they want to import uh, our um, records into their database. And then the te templates are also adapted to the excavation specific, specific formulated uh, questions. So, how are we using it then? I'm going to talk about an excavation we did back in 2016 in Fjellia in southern Sweden. Uh, the report is about to be published. Uh, they excavated three medieval farms and underneath the cultural layers there were uh, prehistoric remains uh, as well. Sorry. Uh, Sophie was the archaeologist and Olli was the osteologist. Sophie uh, always wants her excavations to be better than the previous one. 
And Oli always wants to do correct osteological analysis, of course, but he's also up for trying something new. And they decided to use intrasis in the way it was meant to be, which is very exciting. Uh, this is the site uh, and the intrasis database. It's in Swedish, but to the left you see a part of the object tree. And to the right you have the database map. Uh, classes usually have the same color on the geo objects as the class color you see in the tree, but that's not mandatory. Uh, there's a background map, and in this case, it's an autophoto. Uh, Sophie created two new classes uh, one for groups and another for faces. And that's important for how Oli can do time related osteological analysis. Uh, it was easy for Sophie and Oli to start. You can always import a uh, part of a template from an old database into a new one. So even though they hadn't worked together before, uh, it just took a few minutes to import Oli's template from another database site into the da database Sophie had set up. Oli has three database, three templates he uses. Uh, because he got a little fed up a few years back with the archaeologist engaging him in a project he knew nothing about and asking him to make miracles with very little money and no strategy. So he has three templates. The one, one, the one he prefers is the one that every osteologist can understand. A third is a template where he just records presence of species in context. And then he has a second one, which is somewhere in between. And that's always structured anarchy. What we mean about structured anarchy is that you can record whatever you want, but in interests, the data will always be structured. Um, Sophie and Oli wanted to create an efficient workflow. Timing is then of essence. Uh, archaeologists and specialists can record the data at the same time in interests. But in this case, Sophie wanted Oli to wait until she had interpreted the archaeological data because she wanted Oli to be able to prioritize. But if Oli had waited uh, to record his osteological analysis, Sophie wouldn't have been able to finish the report on time. So they decided that he could start recording his data, but that he should wait to do his contextual analysis until all groups and faces were interpreted and described in the database. He would then be able to use the archaeological data for doing spatial analysis on the osteological data. The novelty for Oli was that he didn't only look at the osteological data in a strictly statistical way, but that he could also look at the data in time and space. And to do time-related spatial analysis, he uses the child relation guide and the summation guide. And he would double check with Sophie if they had um, to see if they had used the same methods when they collected both animal bones from farm 18 to 19. So it would be um, uh, a method question um, if there was differences between the farms. Uh, Oli has more tools to use for getting answers. He can also enter the database through one of his finds uh, this is an example. Uh, he found a beak uh, from a bullfinch and uh, then he could add it to a graph view and then he could just browse his way up to the top and see that uh, the beak came from uh, farm 18 and the face was um, uh, the 12 to 1300s. Here's another example. Uh, here, uh, I'm sure if you can, yeah, if you see there or there, that's the C4. Uh, that's a carbon date, and then he could see uh, which um, uh, which bones that could relate to that uh, carbon date. 
this is uh, just a thing I did yesterday. I wanted to see if there were more uh, tame hen in one house or in one farm than in the or the other. And the the blue dots are duck and goose, and uh, the green are um, uh, tame hen. And this is uh, something that will actually get into the report. Uh, and that he saw that there was a lot more cod in farm 18 than in farm uh, 19. And he also saw that there were more carp fish uh, in uh, 19. Just because we have had interests for 18 years <coughs> doesn't mean it works perfectly in our own uh, organization. Uh, we needed to allow for structured anarchy, for getting our archaeologists to document digitally. And in interests, the data will always be structured. As opposed to archaeological documentation anarchy, uh, when every archaeologist uses their favorite program, uh, which prevents the data to be available for everyone in the project. So, uh, Sophie and Oli doesn't have to email each other list anymore. Uh, Oli can just browse his way to the right answer, even if Sophie is at a conference. Thank you.